Hello, this is a bit of an off-the-cuff video. I just uh, realized there wasn't a lot of information on these watches online, and I thought I'd do a quick video review of my collection. I'll just give you a bit of uh, information on this company and the product. As you can see from the dial, this is not timepiece. And this is their AT38 model, which not on the case. You can trust me. This one's listed as a white, which uh, not so much. Now, I do have uh, mild color blindness, but I'm quite certain that's sort of a metallic or silvery sort of color. It does have a very nice blued second hand, which is difficult to pick up with my uh, crappy lighting, unfortunately. They are automatic watches with Miyota 9015s inside. You can see that clearly from the focus there. Yield Miyota rotor. Kind of hard to miss. They put their own branding on it, and I believe they regulate these slightly because uh, all the examples I have are operating very well uh, as far as rate is concerned. They are a made in Japan company, and that appears to be their primary focus. This is what they're selling made in Japan goods, start to finish. And to that end, although I have not seen them talk about where they get their sapphire from, maybe it's just Japanese, it's possible. The cases are made by a significant case maker. It's the uh, Seiki Seizo uh, Corporation. And these guys are known, their claim to fame is doing the cases for Seiko and Grand Seiko. And that includes the Zeratsu or Salaz Polish, which these watches also have. So what do you get for the money? And the money MSRP on these is, I believe, right, still around 60,000 yen. The current uh, really favorable exchange rates because the Japanese yen hasn't been this long in a very long time. That's around 600 Canadian. Now you're going to be, you can skip the 10% consumption tax on that side, but you will be picking up a 12% or more, depending on what province you're in, uh, GST, PST, or HST tax in Canada. There should be no duty on uh, Japanese goods made in Japan. Nice signed crown there. Look at that horizontal brushing on the case. I mean, it's just perfect, really. Gotta love the drilled lugs. This is, I believe, a 2018 or later model. I've got a 2016, an earlier model here. This is the black. And I don't know what you'd call this, sort of a satin black. It's a very subdued dial. And uh, that's contrasted by a high polish on the markers and hands. It's kind of an inter interesting look. You've got that, that very flat almost. Uh, uh, it's reactive in the right light, as you can see, there's a little bit, but uh, for the most part indoors, it's a very subdued dial. And it's offset, so the, the, the contrast is that glitter. I tell you, the, the Zeratsu polish is a scratch magnet, but still reflects well. Still glitters like it's supposed to. And here we see the no lugs, or no drilled lugs on the earlier model. Some people prefer this, it's a sleeker look. Uh, for me, I'm almost always going to go with drilled lugs. I just prefer it. This one's got kind of a cool band. I really like this type of band. Uh, it's the, you know, that lever action, fully adjustable. 
and you were on the strap. This particular one has some cutouts, so you've got uh, basically two set positions it locks into per link. We've got a double pinch to remove. And there again, you can see that classic, very identifiable Neo to 9 series rotor and movement. So winding in the second position counterclockwise to advance the time. And then back in the first position, clockwise, to change the date. And that wheel, it's not a, uh, you know, a standard white date wheel. It's sort of a silvery color. It's a, a nice little touch. You notice it when you look at it. Not sure what you call this style. They're they're advertising as a throwback uh, to the heyday of Japanese watchmaking, 60s and 70s, and you can definitely see that in the design. They didn't go with a classic docking. They went with a slightly different handset, and I really like the counterbalance knot logo on the second hand. You can find that everywhere in their watches, even this. This is a uh, quartz watch that they do, 36, and if you notice the subdial, 6 o'clock there, that second hand also has the same counterbalance. And I actually did a, a short video review of this little beauty. It's a fun, it's a fun watch. I, I'm classifying it as a fashion watch, that's what uh, the price point and design seem to indicate, but it's got a sapphire crystal. And it's cheaper than a Daniel Wellington. Even the nice Japanese leather band. Most of these guys seem to be, if, if you were to look at their website, you might be forgiven for thinking that it was essentially a strap making company using watches to sell straps. Because <laughs> that's how many straps they have. It's crazy. It is wild. The, the, the variety they have. I mean, they've got Japanese handmade silk. They've got uh, several different types of leather. Uh, it's it's nuts. I mean, so here's one. This is an oiled leather. I came on this and I put it on a deployant, which uh, I think it looks good. Wears well. This is an, another example of a different kind of sort of standard leather strap. You know? Quick release is, uh, I think, on all the straps, it's quick release. Unless you're dealing with a NATO. This one is an Arushi dial. That just means Japanese lacquer. So what this is, is a hand-painted lacquer dial with a bit of gold flake in there, and 24 karat flake. You can see at the right angle in the light there. They have a red one right now that looks, I think, way better than the black. The, the black, it's it's a cool dial. Uh, it's, it's, it's interesting to look at under the right lighting, but that flake practically disappears into it. Uh, whereas with their uh, their red dial, it really pops out of there. And I think, yeah, the markers are a little different. I love this blue. Uh, what would you call it? A navy? Nope. What do we? Put you over there. My wife said it's a midnight blue, but um, 
I can't tell. Mm, got some smudges there. What did I get on there? Probably cut this part out. Use the old uh, alcohol and Q-tip method. Which, by the way, this is totally safe to do. They, much to my joy, because this is my preference, used uh, single-sided AR coating. There we go. Yeah, still got some, whatever. This is how you know you're getting the straight goods. The amateur production. Uh... <laughs> ah, over there. Just there we go. Oh, this. You know what? Screw it. Just look at that dial. That's a beautiful blue. I'm kind of torn over whether to keep this or not. It's not the only blue dial I have. But I do enjoy it. I just put this one on a sort of a generic Japanese strap. Similar um, adjustment. Like I said, I do uh, do really like these straps. I find them comfortable and easy to use. So what are you really getting for the money? Um, I suppose in their price category, if you're looking at say 600 Canadian uh, plus some import, you're right in the mix with a lot of micro brands. And if you want to know what differentiates, where's the value coming from? Uh, I think there are better value propositions than not currently, but they're not badly priced especially used, because you can find these for uh, half of that MSRP. It's still in pretty good condition, like these. What you get is an exceptional case maker and the whole made in Japan hook. If that's important to you, if you enjoy the idea, then uh, this might be a watch for you. The Miyota 9015 movement, it's an exceptional movement, uh, performs very well, especially uh, with positional accuracy. And it's cheap enough that it won't break the bank to service one of these. If you didn't feel like servicing it and you're confident, you could just swap out a movement. Under $150, you can guarantee and maybe, what, 15 minutes work? You take your time, you'll be up and running again. Your service prices aren't bad either. I've uh, got a link to that on the forum somewhere. Maybe the Canadian and Watch Collectors Forum. Or you can just go to their website and uh, under their, uh, I believe it's under their contact or one of those places on the website, you can find their current price list for servicing. And it's really not bad. Some of it's quite inexpensive. I'm not sure about uh, repolish with the uh, with the Zeratsu finish. That probably has to go back to the case maker, which would be uh, the Hayashi Seiki Seizo Corporation. And I imagine that'll cost a little bit more. Might not make sense for one of these models, but if you're shelling out extra for an Arushi dial and you want to uh, get the case spruced up I think that makes sense 
I just really like the the, the style on this. So it's 38 millimeters diameter. Uh, what are we lug to lug? Is it 46? Yeah, about 46 lug to lug. And about 10 and a half millimeters in thickness. It's one of the benefits of a Miyota 9 series movement. You can, you're shaving at least a half a millimeter typically from the case size versus a, uh, a similar ETA. You can see 202 or 300. This one's limited edition. Let's do another look at the Silver slash white slash who knows what. It's got a nice crown. Feels good. See the old ten and two. Apparently this is what people prefer when they look at a watch. Studies have shown. I've been trying to get my hands on their chronograph version. It's the ATC40. It's got a Seiko NE88 movement in there. And it might be the lowest priced any 88 chrono on the market currently. Uh, it's just over uh, 11, 1200 Canadian, somewhere in there. What you get, it's a good value. Yeah, I wish I could capture the blue second on this a little better. It's not really getting it in the light here. Let's see. <laughs> Does that help? No. Uh, no loom. That's worth uh, mentioning. These are sort of positioned as uh, dressier watches. I think it's it's a good uh, in between. This would be a great casual sort of it's a dressy sports watch. Be good for uh, just about anything. You can wear this with jeans or a shirt and tie, definitely. What is going on there? Is it eating something? No, no, apparently. Alright. Yeah, there was a little, there was a visible dot of something on the uh, glass there. And it is now gone. Beauty. Uh, things to criticize about these, because I, honestly, I don't have a lot. Um, this type of strap might be a little weird for you. Reason being, and while it's not an, uh, a large issue with a very thin material like this mesh here, this has got some weight to it. So as you're moving, if you have a smaller wrist like myself, you've moved that clasp up, you've got this much dangling and it's got some weight to it. So when you're trying to put this on your wrist in the air, that is not an arrested position, it can slide around a bit on you. So that's one thing. Uh, the keeper on this also got dinged up by somebody at some point. There is a... Where is it? Yeah, this side. You can see there's a little ding there. So, it does go into position, but it's a little tight. Feels a little mushy. 
you can see right there. Slight angle on that. But overall, it's a good band. Uh, just as I said, with the, the technical difficulties of trying to put this on your wrist one-handed in the air, you might have some issues. And the other thing I'm going to criticize these guys for is the lack of end links available on their website for any of their, their straps. Now, mostly they're not selling this. This is, I think they've only got a few metals, uh, something similar to this. They've got this one and maybe another one. Uh, most of them are leather straps, and they also typically just sell the heads. Oh, that's my mic cord. They're typically just selling the head. So, and then you'll buy the strap uh, for an additional price. For example, so this was 60,000 yen, and this would be an additional 6,000 yen. $60 for the strap. So I understand, I, I suppose, um, I get it's not a big deal, but I would like, if I'm requesting something, for them to have a metal bracelet with end links, and solid end links would be a plus. Then again, if you're going for a Japanese vintage <laughs> experience, probably it should be rattling around like an old Seiko or Susan bracelet. Regardless of the price of that. Alright, so that's uh, the Knot AT38 series. And uh, like I said, I do have a, a video on the CS36. And they have a number of other watches. There's the ATC40, uh, NE88 Chronograph, which I haven't touched. was a great video on YouTube, so maybe I'll do one when I get one. Um, and they have a number of other Quartz uh, style watches. They have an enormous selection actually on their website of everything. You can go and check it out. And there is also a mechanical watch. Um, the I believe it's the Cap 38 is the code. And it's a mechanical watch. It's I suppose considered their standard uh, quality. I believe the price point is somewhere under 400 Canadian currently. And it has uh, an Epson movement. So essentially it's an orient, if you like, and uh, true to form. As an absent movement, it's got a power reserve on the top and an open heart. I'm not an open heart guy. That's just my, my personal tastes. Uh, while I do have a few of those, I prefer this sort of complete, clean, solid dial. And uh, these guys, man. Killing it, really. So there you have it. Not AT38. Not a bad value at MSRP. Not the best, but if you can get these used at about half the price, it's a killer deal. With a great movement and uh, a look that's not that common these days. All right, thanks for watching.